Good afternoon, everyone. Um, nice to be here and talk about open data. And um, yeah, what I'm going to do basically for this presentation, I'm going to just give an overview of what open data is and then look at what the difference between open data is and access to information. And then talk about how can we open up data and just give a brief um, um, uh, overview about the National Special uh, Data Infrastructure, which talks about um, opening up special data, and maybe and there's already a policy on this. And then we're then going to talk about some of the open data uh, in Namibia practices and the research that we have done over the years and the way forward. I'm sure all of us um, often want to know how much of our taxpayers' money is spent on the traffic lights, or how much of the taxpayers' money actually goes to um, goes teachers, goes to officials, and um, and um, and pensioners who have already died but they continue to receive their pension. And many of us as young people we know in a country such as Namibia with high unemployment rate, we want to know which which um, areas or in our regions do we get the best opportunities? And technology answers most of these questions that we want uh, to get answered to, but for us to then be able to answer this question, we need data. And data is then required to build up these digital services that will then give us access to this data or information that we need. But the problem is that the data that is out there is not in reusable format. You are given a PDF, and a PDF is just um, a PDF. Or you are given already processed things which can be manipulated to, sort, to fit a certain narrative. So what is open data? Open data is a movement which started in 2009. And the idea really behind open data is to make public data when we are talking about public data, it's usually data that is generated and collected using public taxpayers money. And the idea is to make this data available for everyone to use, the use without restrictions, meaning that you and I should have access to the same public data like companies do. And this data is not only limited to government data, but it talks about other data such as research, uh, transport data, geospatial data, culture, weather, education, and financial. You know, recently, I'm sure for those that have been watching TV, the floods in South Africa. But if we open up uh, this weather forecast data that the meteorologists uh, actually release, we will then have a lot of uh, innovators that can actually use this to be able to predict rain, um, 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 to predict um, high rainfalls and also be able to anticipate some of these things if we to open it up to people to then mash up into services. So the idea of open data is not new, although we don't have open data in Libya yet. Um, it's not new. It started in 2009, and this when um, it even became prominent with uh, President Barack Obama when he did something that a lot of people in the U.S. thought it was unusual, opening up, opening up massive amounts of public data for actually people to use. And then in the U.S. and in other countries, we have seen how these have actually created opportunities for young people. Innovators were able to use this data to create services that were actually built, uh, providing government services or public services to bring in these services to the people through applications and other digital services. And we also seeing over the years how this webinar has been moving, and there's been a lot of uh, um, uh, momentum, and even big institutions such as the uh, World Bank and even now the African, the African Development Bank are also creating portals and are encouraging countries uh, member countries to actually come up with portals where citizens can access public data. What do we mean by openness? Um, or what do we mean by open data? When, when we talk about open data, we mean that it should be readily available. If I need budget data, the raw data, not the PDF that the minister uh, presents, it should be available at the portal, and I should um, I should um, readily have access um, over uh, or have access um, have access to that portal, and I should be able to download this data. And if I know what is happening, why open data? Briefly. 
the most important thing about open data is that it promotes civic um, engagement and improved decision making. How, why? Because when citizens are informed, they are able to hold leaders to account and they are able to ask the right questions. And by asking the right questions, you then increase transparency and accountability. But for me, the most important thing about open data, and particularly in Namibia, is what we, the innovators, can use this public data for really about creating new services around public data. And this is how we're then going to build up so many services that can take uh, services that government offers to the people. Because it's still, it's hurting to have people travel um, even up to 100 kilometers just to access home affairs. But there are certain things through digital services that we can then allow people, without them traveling, but able to then access services that Oma says offers. And with open data also, we will then also be able to improve efficiency in, gov in, in government services. But most importantly, if we have um, uh, data on how, um, for instance, certain policies are being implemented, we can be able to then measure um, the effectiveness or uh, the impact of certain policies. And if a policy is not impactful, why should we have it for 20 years? So, but for us to be able to have this continuous measurement, we need data. And the opportunities through analytics of then just be able to have, to analyze large government uh, or large public data, there is a lot of value in there. And study by McKinsey in the US alone say that public data is worth around between three to five uh, trillion US dollars. That's how much valuable public data is. But a lot of governments cannot, uh, cannot um, actually harness this value because they, we do not make this uh, public data available. But we are collecting this data. And we are collecting this data using taxpayers' money. And we are collecting this data for the people. Why don't we then make it available for the people? OK, uh, let me just make a correlation with access to information. And I'll also share why I, I think access to information is important. But access to information is not necessarily um, it's, it's just one part. Access to information, of course, aims to empower our citizens by providing them um, access to public data, uh, public information that is um, is uh, generated or collected by public institutions. But this is where the problem is, and this is where I have the problem with the act as well. It does not say how long, for instance, you know, should a request take. And some of those answers that I think uh, it's important. Imagine you are a user in Okangwati, you request for certain information, and then the commission, uh, the access to information commissioner uh, reviews your, your 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 application, and then of course this guy once it's approved, um, an official will then have to then um, query um, the raw data and then try to then manipulate this data into. Um, the information that you need. But how sure are we that these guys won't just give you the information um, that actually suits a certain narrative? How will you validate it? Anyone that uh, has an idea of how you can validate it? So, and that's really the biggest challenge, mm -hmm. is that access to information is important, but the information can be manipulated. So what open data then gives is this. The raw data is at the bottom, and you, as, as a citizen, you can view the data set, even including the metadata, and then download this data set. So all the official does is that, of course, once they collect the data and then quality assurance is checked, they upload the data. So in open data, you have access to this data 24-7. You don't need an information. Um, uh, 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 you don't need to request for it. And of course, skeptics will say not everyone have the, um, have the abilities to manipulate data and be able to understand data. We agree. 
But the most important thing is that this data should also be available. And even if society, there was one um, um, actually advocating for access to information bill, but they will be disappointed in the end because sometimes the information that they can be, they will get, will not be, will be manipulated. But with access to information, working together with open data, you can then be able to validate the information that government officials give out. So how, how can we open up data? The Open Knowledge uh, Foundation actually uh, recommends three um, recommendations. One is to keep it simple, meaning that, um, of course, there is no requirement that uh, all public data should be available. And also, open data does not say that we want to know government secrets. We don't want to know how much um, the Ministry of Defense is spending on weapons. We don't need that. But what we need is, for instance, how much data is budgeted? How much data does each ministry retain each year? How much uh, does the ministry spend on a clinic in a dollar? How how much does um, 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 the minister? Uh, how much does the minister of education spend on a school in Falkras? That is public data that people need to know. And of course, the most another important uh, thing that the uh, Open Knowledge Foundation they also suggest is the um, engage the users early, meaning that the potential users you. you you, we need to engage them early through even co-creation activities such as hackathon and this is what we have been doing in the past creating hackathons having some public data sets that we get from uh, NSA and then have different stakeholders come together to then just see what value one can derive from data and we need to um, to address the common fears and misunderstandings. I remember during the consultation when I raised the point of an of a portal, one of the um, um, one of the officials actually said that apparently the, if we make the data available, the CI will conspire on us. There is nothing to spy on. If they wanted to spy on, they already spy on because you sometimes use Gmails, you use all these uh, other services you don't use to put data. Plus, anything, you're already giving budget information anyway. They know how much you're spending. You're giving the Ministry of Defense and stuff. But if you then make this data available, it's of benefit to us as Namibians. Practically, how do we open up data? It's not complicated as we, we make it seem. Sometimes it's all about identifying certain data sets that we already have. And we then can to take one or two and then try to make it available and then engage the different stakeholders. But we have this data here, you can download it here and then see how people use the data. And before you then upload this data, you then ensure that the intellectual uh, property rights of, determine those intellectual property rights of uh, the data and make sure that you apply the open license. Um, and then after that, you then avail the data, but when you are availing the data, make it available in reusable format, CSV, Excel, and other formats that people can reuse. And then make the data discoverable. Don't put it in your office so that people can come and request for their data. Put it online so that I search for it and I can download it if uh, I think uh, this data is of interest. And one thing that some people say, I oh, know we can't have open data because it's risky. But I'm like, we have open data when it comes to special data. And for those that are aware, back in 2015, NSA came up with the special data infrastructure. And really what it talks about is ensuring, the aim is to ensure that users have access to special data and also provide an access to a portal where you can go and then get special data. And from this portal, you are able to see all the mappings of all the structures in Namibia schools and clinics, and with this you can then use this information to, to, for planning, for, this, uh, um, for the planners to then determine where do we need school, what's the distance between schools and villages, and um, um, where do we need more schools. And I think the most important about really having open data is the, having the raw data and the metadata. This is very is key. Because just giving information like, uh, like that, I do not know what is the metadata of this information. It's not helpful at all. 
Okay, um, open data in Namibia over the years, we have uh, had a lot of scientific publications that own some best practices through the work that we have done on how the value of open data, like through hackathons, we have teams coming together and then creating solutions using open data. And one solution which will soon be coming to market is something called Fix My City. It's where citizens go, and if you see maybe a pothole in your street, you can report it, and then officials can actually then attend to it. Traffic lights are not working, you take a picture and post. And one other solution, that we, we created was a bus, a bus application, which the aim was to actually help people to know where the bus stops are. And I'm sure many of you don't even know where the bus stops are uh, in Vindu. And to also then tell you the routes of the buses and when does each bus uh, leave and where. Okay, what is the way forward? As much as we have access to information built that is in Parliament, uh, we also need to we, uh, it would be ideal for us to have an open data policy, and I'm looking at Melinda and everyone from the ministry to actually um, look up at some of these things and ensure how can we have um, this um, open data policy in Namibia. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel, we can look at South Africa, and really South Africa has done um, well over the last four years when it comes to open data, and they have made most of their public data sets available, and people can read use. But we have an elephant in the room, in the room that um, most of our, of our data is here in those, uh, in, those, uh, in those filing cabinets. So what we need to do, we need to then make sure that we digitize these data sets and then once we digitize these data sets, we put it um, on an open data portal where people can just go, if we need them to log in, they can log in, create an account, log in, and have access to data um, that they require. Just to conclude, we all know how data, um, that data is an essential component in our lives. And for many of us, we are using trackers, which are actually telling us how many steps we take, how many, um, um, uh, how, how many times should we run to lose the calories that we need to, uh, to lose. Um, so data is transforming how we live, how we work, and how we think. So let's capitalize on the opportunities that open data provides or present. And these opportunities, some of them will be able to stimulate economic activity is if we have innovators that can use public data to create services, these services can become companies and these companies can employ more young people. Um, so um, therefore improving quality of life for all and also making sure that we really make data-driven decisions. Most of the decisions we take in this country are, are based on assumptions and that needs to change. Sometimes we have the data to actually ensure that every decision we take is data driven or is informed by data. So, and the most important thing really about open data and when you have an informed um, citizenry, the citizenry will be um, asking the right questions and by them asking the right questions, will then get transparency and they will then hold those um, who are meant to be their servants accountable. And most importantly, if we know, like uh, usually all this information that we are getting even about Parliament Road and all these things, we are then able to fight corruption when we are aware of what is happening. And um, so it's really important that we try to then um, harness this value from public data because it costs money to collect the data. Just imagine how much uh, that we we're able, what, that we we're supposed to spend on census. It costs about a billion. But we can't spend a billion every 10 years but just have the data there. And that data is very, very important. We should, through analytics, be able to derive value from that data. And only then can, it, uh, can we will be able to have uh, our data collection and generation kind of like sustainable. Okay. So it's our data and let's liberate it. Thank um, you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs>